After 35 years of teaching science, I stepped out of the brick and mortar classroom. And since my first year of teaching, I have noticed significant changes in our children. But there has been a huge increase in behavioral and learning issues. I was born in 1960. Not quite when the dinosaurs roamed the earth, but if you do the math, that makes me 60 years old. In a town where I grew up, most children were of normal weight and rarely had problems learning. Well, there were a few exceptions, but I didn't see the issues that we see today. Take, for example, autism. My first encounter with autism wasn't until the 1990s. But now, according to the CDC's Autism and Developmental Disabilities Monitoring Network, yes, there is such a thing. One in 54 children are now autistic. What? And that's just autism. There are so many other behavioral and learning issues out there. So my question is why? Why in my lifetime has this changed? Why is there such an increase in childhood learning and behavioral issues? As a person of science, I kept looking for a reason. You know, cause, something happens, and then effect. But I think that's along the lines of a very reductionist thought process. I needed to step back and look at the bigger picture. Since World War II, so many chemicals have been introduced into our environment. And I grew up with that phrase, better living through modern chemistry. To some extent, that may be true. But on the other hand, we have become walking chemical experiments. Literally, anything that you put on your body in 26 seconds will be in your bloodstream, and it will have an impact on you. On average, a woman is exposed to 168 toxic chemicals a day, and babies are being born with over 200 industrial chemicals and pollutants in their umbilical cord. What? They're not even an hour old and they're already loaded with toxins? And are these chemicals in our food, in our personal care products, in our cleaning products, our environment, are they causing the issues? There's very little regulation and pretty much anything goes. It's like the wild, wild west. I guess I was a little naive growing up. I thought that if something was on the shelf, that someone along the line, along the way, had said this is okay for human use. No. At least in Europe, they use what's called the precautionary principle, which basically says that you have to prove it's not going to be harmful to the human body before you can sell it. But that's not how we do things here. So, chemicals in our personal care products cleaning products, chemicals being used to grow and preserve food. Many of these chemicals are endocrine disruptors. The endocrine system is a series of glands that produce and secrete hormones that the body uses for a wide range of functions, like respiration, you know, breathing, metabolism, reproduction, growth, and so much more. So do you think there'll be a problem if these glands are disrupted? On the other hand, we have chemicals that are purposely being added to our environment, like fluoride to our water. <laughs> Dentists use fluoride treatments that are applied directly to the teeth. And interestingly enough, as the dentist is shoving this tray of fluoride foam into your mouth, he or she says to you, don't swallow. And then yet we have towns and states that are purposely adding fluoride to our water, which we do swallow. Does our body need fluoride to operate? No. Does our body need iodine to operate? Why, yes, it does. So if you have fluoride in your water, it will displace iodine. Simple high school chemistry. And doctors are seeing quite an increase in health issues stemming 
from low levels of iodine. So what is iodine used for in our body? It helps to regulate the, one of the main hormone producing glands, the thyroid. This produces hormones associated with calorie burning and heart rate. You know, we take in fuel, which is our food, and it's basically broken down or burned in our body. So if the thyroid gland is disrupted by endocrine disruptors, could that cause a problem? And let's not forget about some of the other hormone producing glands, like your pancreas produces insulin. According to the CDC, one out of 10 are now diabetic. One out of three are pre-diabetic. What? And how about your ovaries? If you're trying to get pregnant, do you think this might have an impact on you getting pregnant? According to the CDC, 12% of women aged 15 to 44 are having difficulty getting pregnant or carrying a baby to term. So let's circle back to my classroom because throughout my career, I would have so many students who had profound learning and behavioral issues. At the beginning of the school year, I would have this mountain of paperwork to read about the students and all their issues that I would be teaching. And not just learning problems or behavioral problems, but health issues. In just about every class, I had at least a third or more of my students with chronic major health issues, which resulted in continual absences and obviously low grades. Headaches, migraines, constant illness. Oh my gosh, anytime a flu or cold would sweep through the school, they would get it. Or major health issues like diabetes or allergies. Peanut butter. Wow. When did peanut butter become a weapon of mass destruction? So as I stepped out of the classroom, I wanted to do something. I wanted to be part of the change. The change to make our children healthy again. The change to make our children's environment a better place. The change to get our health back. So we're do you start to impact this change? Well, I started to think back to the food or fuel our children are consuming. I thought if we could raise the next generation with food that is nourishing and promote their health, such as a whole food, plant-based lifestyle, would that be the place to start? I started researching and I connected with Jeffrey Smith who created a film called Secret Ingredients. And at the heart of this true story is Kathleen and her family of five who are collectively struggling with 21 chronic diseases. And despite living a healthy lifestyle, exercising and eating right, they were struggling with their health. She became determined to figure out what was causing these issues. And everything changed when she identified the toxins that were keeping them in a perpetual state of illness and eliminated them from her kitchen, which is what I call your wellness center. And the results were dramatic. And her experience is not unique. So I began interviewing people who were plant-based and raised their children this way. Did they see a difference in their children as compared to their peers? Oh yeah. They did, and so did the doctors too. Dr. Michael Clapper has worked with many women through plant-based pregnancies. And overall, he commented that they rarely had issues during pregnancy, things like gestational diabetes or preeclampsia, and delivery and recovery were so much quicker. And almost always the children growing up were extremely healthy and rarely went to the doctor's office, basically for wellness visits. So to achieve this change, to get our children's health back, 
we need to start before conception and focus on two things. One, provide your body and your future child with nutrients, the highest level that you can get, which would be through a whole food plant-based lifestyle. And two, use products that are toxic free for your personal care and cleaning products. It can be done. With these simple changes, I believe we can get our children's health back as well as our own, which will directly impact the very next generation and basically save our planet. We have to start with the children. Thank you for listening.